Welcome back to Love with a Classic and we're here with this absolutely gorgeous car, 1975 US spec XJ6C or you know an XJ Coupe, six cylinder version and we got a lot of work to do on this car. You've seen a video on it before and it arrived on a tow truck a couple weeks ago and I got it running. It was a year ago it ran then but it's been sitting you know not been on the road for about seven years I believe. So that's quite some time, which means uh, some things don't work, uh, some things have leaked out, and other things like that. Power steering doesn't work, things have leaked out. Another couple things, uh, it's running way too rich, and uh, we got some things to go through. Because you've seen some previous videos, you know I'm going on a long road trip in about a month's time for a Swedish Jag meet. It's about 2,000 kilometers, about 1,000 there and 1,000 back. I'm going in the XJS V12 convertible. Um, however, my friend who has this car, he's coming along and he's driving this thing, which means we have less than a month to get this thing road trip ready. And we're talking, you know, long road trip in the middle of summer. So uh, we've got a lot of things to go through. I have a lot of parts I've ordered and uh, we're gonna order some more. We'll go through that in a little bit. But I wanna do something a little bit different here. I usually make videos where each video is on a topic and that sort of it. But here we're gonna make a series. I'm not sure if it's gonna be four or five videos, not really sure. They're gonna be a little bit longer than usual, so we'll call these sort of my summer specials. And um, they're gonna be a little bit random. It's gonna be just what happens um, at the time because we're gonna probably tackle a couple of projects at once just because of parts availability, uh, things cleaning and parts washers and ultrasonic cleaners. Um, paint drying, all those sort of things, you know, factor in. So we're in a little bit of hurry, we're going to do a lot of things at once. But let me grab the camera, we'll do a quick walk around of the car, in case you haven't seen it before, and we're going to do some inspection of a couple parts now, because I have one more order I'm going to make for parts, so I can have them in time. So um, we'll have a look around the car, see if there are any things I'm going to add to that order. Since I got here, it's been sitting down in my storage and I drove it up here yesterday. The only thing I did so far is crack the windows. So there's nice ventilation, but that was in the storage as well. If you remember in the last video, I tried to roll down one of the rear windows. That whole chrome thing just dropped down into the door. So that is one thing we have to do. Remove the door card there, get that on there. Make sure this thing is actually stuck on so the same thing doesn't happen. Um, other than that, electric windows seem to work fine. The lights seem to work. Even check the radio, that works, the clock, all of that. So that seems to be fine. But we're probably still gonna go through the fuse box, clean things up in there, just to make sure. We do have another set of wheels on it, and I've ordered tires for it. So we're gonna have some nice white walls coming. So that's also a good thing to have new tires on the trip. The only other thing I've done is drain the fuel tank. It was really only fuel in the left tank. And there's a couple of reasons I did that. It's been leaking. You see the marks down in there? That is just basically undercoating and gasoline. And I've looked back here. There's a lot of stuff here at the moment. Part in here and all of that. But I look quickly under here. Both fuel pumps are wet. Especially the right one is leaking quite badly and the left one a little bit. So I got two new fuel pumps on the way. So they will be replaced as well, along with all the fuel lines. One other thing I've noticed, if you remember, bonnet doesn't stay up. Got this uh, custom piece right here. And I found out why there's a spring, but it seems to be missing on this side. And I'm gonna see if it's just dropped down here somewhere or if it's completely missing, see if I can get a hold of one. So uh, that's a good thing. Otherwise, we're going to have to uh, cut a piece of wood that works as a prop and just use it for the trip because at some point we're going to have to open it and you don't want this hitting your head. Uh, battery seems to be new, so that's good. We're going to see if it fits in the battery box. If not, uh, maybe get different battery or make some type of hold down for it. Engine oil looks nice and clean, but we're going to change that, of course. I can't see any major oil leaks on the engine. Cam covers look nice and dry and all of that. So uh, we're probably just going to clean up 
the cam covers a bit, but uh, leave them as is because I personally like a little bit of patina because this is a really original car except for uh, one respray, but otherwise, you know, so, but anything that's rusty or things like that, of course, we're going to clean up, but, uh, you know, here we can just shine this up a bit. We got the Strombergs. We had a lot of comments about that. But here's the thing. This is a fairly original car. It's never going to be a speed machine. It's an XJ6. And this is a California low compression one. So what we're going to do, we're just going to make the best of it. Because it does run pretty well on them. It just has probably a choke issue. Uh, just that it's a little bit overly enriched. And it has twin water chokes. So we're going to clean those out, try and get those working, go through the carbs. That's one thing that we're going to check right away. Do we need a complete rebuild kit or just a gasket kit? Because they're very different. Gasket kits are easy to get a hold of. Rebuild kits, um, a little bit longer to get a hold of. So we're going to have a look at that. But they're working. Uh, they're not leaking and both of them are working. So hopefully that is something. Otherwise, I got all the hoses on their way. So we're going to do coolant hoses. I don't know how old they are. They don't look terrible, to be honest. But we might as well. They are... Um, yeah, they're not rock solid. But it's a long trip. And that's one thing that always breaks on long road trips is hoses. We're doing fuel hoses, of course, as well. We are going to do the belts. The fan clutch seems to be fine. The AC worked the last time the owner drove it. Doesn't work now. So most likely gas is leaked out. So see if we can find where the leak is and gas that up. Brake fluid's gonna be changed. Change the transmission fluid and I got a pan gasket. I'm gonna try and get filter as well. Uh, I got new radiator caps on the way. Yeah, you know, just doing all of the basics. We're gonna remove most of the smog that we can. Belt's already gone for, for the air pump. But we're going to try and remove this as well, just sort of clean up the engine bay a little bit. Other than that, we're going to replace the grill. This is a Series 3 one. I have a Series 2 one that I'm going to give the owner to put on there. And the windows were out of it when it was painted, so it has new seals, but it's leaking. And I noticed they put them in without any sealant at all. So I think we're going to try and get some sealant in there. And that has caused a tiny bit of surface rust on that floor. So the owner wants me to just rust treat the floors. They're solid, just has a little bit of surface rust. So we're going to do that and paint them in a nice anti-corrosion paint. So probably remove the front seats to get access to do that. But, uh, Probably forgetting something. Oh yeah, we're gonna have a look at the suspension, make sure that there are no bushings that are terrible because it does need to pass a, an inspection. Grease the front wheel bearings, take those out, adjust to make sure that they're all right. Have a look at the brakes and uh, that's pretty much it. Just got the front end up in the air and both wheels off. And I'm glad I did because the brake pads are pretty much shot. There's not much left there. So time to replace those. Discs look great, no sign of any lip or anything, and that tiny bit of surface rust will just go away with uh, some driving. Bushings look pretty good as well. Um, slight cracking down there on an inner bush, but we'll have a look at that. And uh, you know, we're in a slight time constraint, so we're gonna see if that's fine. Otherwise, I do have a complete set of bushings for a front uh, suspension for one of these cars. Springs look good, everything else looks um, looks good. It's just uh, bushings for the anti-roll bar, a little bit cracked as well, so we might do those also. I do have new brake hoses for it, so that is a given, but everything else looks really good. One thing I think I'll do right away is we're just gonna crack the bleed nipple, and we're just gonna see if these want to, the pistons want to push in or not. So if they don't really want to, then we'll get a rebuild kit for the brakes. But otherwise, uh, we'll just exercise them and they should be fine. So we'll do that now. And then afterwards, we'll have a look at the rear brakes and see if we need pads or discs or anything back there. Let's see if this is possible. So 
while I'm in here, I'm actually just going to spread out all the fittings for the brakes as well, just because I know that they're coming off. And let's see. All right, that cracks nicely. The good thing about it, that it is a California car, is that nothing should really be rusted or um, have any issues. Got brake fluid coming out, so that's good. Uh, I'm going to try it first once without cracking that and just... Oh yeah, that's moving. Well, we'll make life a little bit easier. Crack this. And we can do one piston at a time. That moved. Hmm. I mean, they're moving, but I'm trying to make up my mind if we're going to do them or not. Okay, that really does move. So what is that? I think I'm just getting a much better grip on things now. No, that one doesn't as easily. And... Oh, that one really doesn't either. Um, yeah, I think we'll get a rebuild kit for these and uh, rebuild them. So that is one more thing to order. Now let's look underneath. I'm just going to sort of crawl in with a flashlight and see what the rear brakes look like. I'm not going to try this, but we're just going to have a look at them and see if they look pretty good because the rear brakes are usually a lot easier to get moving again. And I don't think we're going to want to drop the IRS because we don't have time. I just crawled underneath the back. It was too tight for me to show you guys, but rear pads look almost brand new and everything looks nice back there. So I think that's not going to be an issue. And then I just look under the car and the whole car is very nice underneath. Very, very clean. One thing I've noticed, which I haven't really seen before, is the color is still on the torque converter. So either this transmission has been rebuilt or this thing really just has lived a nice life with not a lot of moisture and no way of rusting. But we really don't have any bad leaks anywhere. I mean, it could be terrible. We've got a tiny bit of sweating from the pan gasket there. A little bit running down the back there, but nothing much. What we do have, and I did see this on the ground, is a power steering leak. Um, everything's a little bit wet, but it's usually the pinion seal, so we'll replace that and then have a look at the lines. And then there's a split in the gator, so we'll get both of those. It does have new um, bushings, so that's good. Uh, so we'll see. Possibly I'll drop the rack or I'll do it in place. It's on six cylinder, you can do everything in place really easily. Otherwise, it's looking really, really good under here. We're going to have a quick look at the carbs here. They're going to need some type of rebuild slash adjustment. It's running a little bit rich. We'll have a look at the plugs in a bit as well. Just make sure that they're all pretty even. But one thing I did notice is just like SUs, Strombergs are supposed to have a bit of oil in them. This one has nothing. Unlike an SU where there's a fine machine surfaced. Here there is a diaphragm in here and they're prone to splitting. What happens when they split is well the oil gets sucked in and then they also you know leak air there. And I thought it's a good idea to try and get these tops off here while it's bolted to the engine which is good because I tried with a screwdriver and they didn't really want to come off. So we are going to see if I can get them off with some gentle persuasion. There we go. 
And then, like I said, I am probably just going to get the gasket kit and the diaphragm. And I may get a needle and seat. I use a slightly different type of needle and seat than SU's. And I don't think they're as prone to leaking and overflowing as SU carbs are. Seeing a lot of sort of regular maintenance on this car, so all the hoses look pretty fine, but we don't know how old the hoses are, so we're gonna replace them. But these like AC lines look pretty new and some other things, so uh, it's definitely had maintenance over the years, which is nice to see. There we go. Let's start with the one. I think has a broken diaphragm. Get that all off. This is actually the first time I mess with uh, Strombergs besides just tuning them. I usually just work on SU carbs, but actually, if you not, might not know, I live in Sweden, and in Sweden we had Stromberg carbs as well on Jags. Many have swapped them out or done other things for different engines in, but we have really strict emissions as well. Pretty much almost California emissions in the 70s. And for a couple of years, the V12 was not sold in Sweden because of emission reasons. So here is a top and we'll clean this up and I think we're gonna polish it a little bit for him. I think he'll like that. We have a spring. And we have a piston with, you know, a tapered needle on the bottom, just like SU's. Looks very similar. And we have the diaphragm, which we know are prone to splitting. So just be interesting to see if these are split. I mean, I'm going to replace them, but uh, hey. They actually are not split. So that's really interesting. So that is not one of the reasons why this thing is uh, running rich. And then when you tune Stromberg's, it's a little bit different. Instead of uh, doing underneath with a screwdriver, you have a special tool that goes in for the top and turns through here when you set the mixture. We're going to do all of that, of course, later when we rebuilt him. But looking inside them, looks very nice and clean in there. A little bit like that is completely normal. So we will put that just back in there. And you know, like I said, we're gonna completely strip them on the bench. I'm not sure if it will be in this episode or the next one. And run them through my ultrasonic parts cleaner. Or I haven't, I've actually ordered one, but I'm gonna borrow a friend's one until mine arrives. Hmm, these are spring loaded just like the HIF, so they're a bit of a pain to get in. And we have the spring. And we'll just set this down on top. And now, let's open up the next one and have a look inside there as well. Alright, let's get the second one off. Before I remove this, I actually put the screws in the other one. Just I like to keep things complete for these carbs. And, uh, yeah, it's all in there. This is the one that had a little bit of oil left in it. And, yep, there's oil in there. Really strange, no splitting or anything, but because we're doing the amount of work we are doing, we're going to replace them. Uh, they don't actually come in a gasket kit, you can, but you get them separately, so we're going to do that. If I can never get these back together. But one thing that is interesting 
it's, I've always thought of a little bit of design flaw with this engine bay. And don't get me wrong, I love the XJ Series 2. In my opinion, it's like the perfect car. It's why I drive one every day. But these braces here, they're in the way for every single carb. Um, here on the Strombergs, the nice thing is you can actually get oil into that dash pot. But for instance, on mine, which um, the big two inch SUs, I can't even get oil in the rear dash pot. I always have to move this to the side. So uh, that is a little bit of an annoying design feature. And so is this. I'm probably doing it all wrong. Someone who is an expert on Strombergs probably yelling at the screen. But I'm going to put that back together. And I have noticed one more thing in here. The water valve is not an original one. It's a plastic one. So we're going to get one of those. Just sort of go through everything that I think can leak. But let's uh, let's pull the plugs. See what they look like if they're all dark. And if the only rich running reason might be... Uh, might just be the chokes, which are over here. Which I'm hoping my the ultrasonic cleaner is going to help out. But I'll put this back together. Pull the plugs. And let's have a look at those. You may be wondering why I'm pulling the plugs. Well, it's just that I want to see that none of the cylinders look a lot different than the other ones. Um, that we don't have one that, you know, it's completely drenched in oil or one that is mechanical damage, but the engine sounds fine or that there's coolant in one of them. Just gonna make sure before we do all this work to this car. Not everything is fine. I do have new plugs as well. All my parts are coming in tomorrow, I believe. So we have new plugs and that will be probably one of the last things that we put in. So these are just coming out to um, have a look at them and then they're going straight back in. So no dirt gets into the engine. But, uh, none of them are really stuck. They are quite rusty looking. So uh, they've probably been in there quite a long time. Let's start with cylinder one, and in case you don't know, XK engines are numbered backwards, so that is cylinder one. Really, really black and carbony. Smells of old gas, and uh, yeah. But if they all look like that, I'll be pretty happy. They're even. And yeah, it was definitely running rich. That one looks the same. Looking the same. Now we're on the next carb and this one looks the same as well. Looks the same. And that one looks the same as well. So good news, they're all even at least, and they're all firing. No foreign objects, no excessive oil, and no uh, coolant. So we'll put this back in, and then we at least have it confirmed that yes, it's running quite rich. But we'll put these back in, and then we'll move on to the next thing. I spoke to my main parts supplier, who we're, I'm gonna get parts from tomorrow, and they actually had pistons and seals for these calipers at home so i'll have those tomorrow so what i could start with now is taking the calipers off and start stripping those out but i think i'm going to start with stripping out the engine bay removing the carbs and all of that just because i want to see if there's anything else i need because tonight i'm going to order the rebuild kits for the carbs and just another couple small things i need that they did not have in stock and uh, that takes a week or so before I get that. So I'll set up a little camera for you guys so you can see this whole strip down. We'll remove uh, all of this, get the carbs on the bench, and then after that, onto the brakes.
carbs are off and that was a little bit fiddly it's tighter to remove these carbs and su carbs even though they're smaller but yep yeah, it's tighter i also just removed the calipers that you can't really see over there but one interesting thing i found is right there you can actually see on that stud it looks a little different that was missing a nut it was completely gone and the corresponding one over here was loose as well so um, that's not good that could cause vacuum leaks i'm gonna get a spare nut i believe they are the same as on the intake and i have a couple spare engines laying around so we can grab one of those but otherwise things are looking good lots of vacuum lines and things i am going to do a little bit of research and see how much smog stuff we can remove i mean legally i can remove pretty much all of it because uh, this thing can easily meet the exhaust standards here for 1975 car you just need a co of less than 4.5 or 4.5 and less and this thing can easily do that so we're going to see how much of that we can remove but let's go over to the bench and i'll show you guys um, the carbs and the calipers so here are the calipers off i will uh, strip them down when i have the rebuild kit i've gone for seals and pistons i ordered just the pistons just because well, you never know what these look like they can either look great inside i've had some that were stuck but when i got the pistons out i could just polish them up and they look great and then i've had some which are completely rusted so got a set of pistons always good to have in case and we got seals for it and then i think i'll clean them up and um, possibly paint them we'll talk to the owner about that and then here are the carbs which yeah they're complete at least and everything is there the only thing I've noticed is I'm not a Stromberg expert, but I believe this is called a temperature compensator. But the one over there is cracked. So I'm going to see if that is an issue. That is just like a cover or if that needs to hold vacuum or something. If it does, we'll have to get a spare one of those. Otherwise, it's just a matter of cleaning all of this up. And um, I don't know I'm a little tempted just to polish the tops a little bit just to make them a little... You know, not like a mirror shine like I do on SUs, but just a little bit, make it look nice. Um, other thing I found is that the gasket for the air filter was missing, so that's not really great. And the air filter is coming apart as well, so uh, check your air filters, guys. But yeah, it's really, really late now, past midnight. I'm going to call it a night, and then uh, next time you see me, we should have some parts. It's a couple days later and I've been quite busy. As you can see, I have taken the calipers apart. So the pistons, most of them are pretty okay. Some light pitting there. So in a pinch, you could reuse these. I've seen a lot worse. However, I have new pistons, so we're gonna reassemble them with new seals, new pistons, all of that. And they'll be pretty much like new and plus they'll last a lot longer with the stainless steel pistons. Over here is one of the calipers, I'm ready to paint it. So I have had this in my parts washer, gotten all the grease and grime off, then I've dried it off. I have gone over it with a wire brush and now I have wiped it over with some thinner. So I'm ready to paint it. I'm gonna brush paint it with silver caliper paint. You can spray paint them as well, but um, I think this brush paint works really, really well. And it's quite a rough shape, so uh, it looks good when it's brush paint as well. The other caliper is over here. It's a little dark in this side of my workshop, but it's soaking in the parts washer right there. So I'm going to agitate that with a little bit of brush, clean it off. It should look as good as the other one. Parts have arrived, and everything's a little bit of a mess here. I just dropped a whole container of washers, so uh, that's fun. There's 250 of them in there, so... Um, you know, kind of mad about that. But we have coolant hoses. We have belts. We have filters. We got new pistons for that. Wires, uh, spark plugs, cap and rotor. You name it. We got all the parts here. And I have another thing of parts coming. I got the um, rebuild kit, gaskets for the carbs. I got a heater valve. A receiver dryer and a few other small things coming along i have done one thing with the car which we haven't talked about uh not really a light up here but let me just show you real quick there is a tiny bit of 
surface rust in the floors. It's nothing really at all. I mean, it's a California car, but it's basically just from a little bit of rain getting in there from old seals and all of that. And we just don't want it to get any worse. So I'm going to rip both seats out. I'm halfway through doing that. I'll show you guys what's involved. Just scuff up the floor a little bit with a wire brush and a scotch pad. And I have some great paint that we'll just paint it with. It will make it look a lot nicer. And if we do get water in there or the owner gets water in there, that paint will help protect the area. It's a really, um, it's a good metal paint. And, uh, well, we want to do that now just because I don't want the car to smell freshly painted for him. So we're going to do that now. And then we can bring the car out in the sun someday, really let it bake and that will cure and all the smell will go away. But we'll head on back to the bench and uh, I'm going to start painting this caliper. And then while it dries, I will start fixing up the other one, making that nice. And then I'll bring these out in the sun tomorrow, let them cure a little bit, a uh, day or two. And then we can reassemble them with new pistons, new seals and all of that. All right, let's start painting. Let me know in the comments down below if you may want a separate video on rebuilding brake calipers is one of those things that I mean it's definitely DIY but it's one of those things that maybe not everyone should do just because it is a safety item with brakes but I feel that if you're just a normal competent home mechanic you can rebuild brake calipers it's not very difficult the difficult part is getting them you know apart um, various different tricks I have used most of them and they all work really well grease works really well so a grease gun, however, it's quite messy. So it's always my last resort. I got these out with two screwdrivers just wiggling a little bit back and forth on the piston and compressed air. So, um, and one of the trick is if you can't get a piston out, see if you can try and get it to move in a little bit. And at the same time, you know, use penetrating fluid and get that to go in with the piston. And then, um, work it back and forth a couple times and sooner or later it will start coming out well i'm going to paint this caliper i will paint the other one as well let those dry and i think while they dry and cure we will move on with painting the interior so uh it will be probably a couple hours in between then but you guys will see an instantaneous cut to removing the seats Got this seat left to do, and they're very easy to remove. They're very similar to the saloon seats, except that the seat cushion is not fastened from the front, it's fastened from the back. And yeah, remove the lower cushion, and then there are four nuts holding in place around here. Pretty straightforward. I got one more left to do over here, and then the seat can come out. The other reason we're taking the seat out is also, if you remember the first video on this car, we uh, tried the windows and a piece of chrome on the other window just went down into basically the quarter panel. So we're going to have to remove probably the back seat and probably the um, door panel over there or, you know, quarter panel inside, whatever you want to call that. And... Um, get that out and that will be a lot easier with the seats out of the way as well so uh, that's also why we're doing that now so we can fix the window all right there we go the whole seat should be loose now and that's the last the car now we have a lot more room for activities you can easily get to the floor pans i'm just gonna sort of bend the carpets back and there's no real rust there but you see the surface rust is sort of where these adhesive strips have been a little film that you know flattens all these out they always trap water under there so i have actually never put them back in any of my cars i always just put the thick rest of sand insulation but i really don't like those they trap water so i will probably just do a really quick once over with a wire brush 
vacuum it once then we'll do just a scotch pad over it vacuum it dry it off with some pre-paint and paint it should be pretty straightforward but now we have easy axes as well to get that panel off or that little chrome thing that's missing it's this piece right here that has disappeared down behind there just taking a little break here in the rear seat of the coupe first time sitting in the rear of one of these cars a lot of lug room with the seats missing so uh, i want to try out later when the seats are in how it actually feels to sit in the back of one of these anyways it is once again way past midnight on to the next day it's always when i'm out working on cars um time flies but uh lots of things have been done and i think that we're gonna wrap this up for this part this will be part one of this series not sure how many parts three four something like that but in this part we've done a lot of things we've you know introduced the project we've taken the carbs off found out which ones they are got the parts on order they should arrive on friday it is early early wednesday morning right now we do have all the other parts as well brake calipers are drying i'm going to give them one more light coat of paint and they should look really good and then i'll bring them out in the sun tomorrow have them lay out and just you know bake a little bit and um after a couple days i'll be back with part two and then we'll put the pistons in all of that new brake hoses mount them on the car However, before that, we'll pull the hubs and just clean out the wheel bearings. They sound really good, but I don't know the last time they were serviced. And this thing's going on a long trip. So we'll take those out, clean them up, new grease, put them all back together, adjust them, all of that. And um, then we might move on to the rear, have a look at the rear brakes. Just make sure that they're fine. Hopefully that should be a pretty quick thing. Grease up any of the grease points in the rear and uh, may do the diff fluid now or we may do it later I'm not sure about that and then we're going to continue of course with the engine as soon as we have the parts for the carbs we can rebuild those and they can go back on the car we got the fuel pumps to do we have the hoses are here now i have to buy fuel lines um so this, there's a lot to do hopefully we can get done it's about another three weeks or so four weeks when this car needs to be where it, at that you know at the summer meet but i want to drive it a bit before handing it over to the owner it also needs to go there it needs to be inspected we gotta fix the ac so i'm giving this a week and a half two weeks and this thing needs to be up and running again ready to be inspected so it's gonna be quite tight but anyway i hope you guys like this series that you'll follow along this is part one maybe not that much happened here but we got a lot more things going on this is just you know a slow start but um, sort of working on things and realizing we realized that the brakes were bad did not know about that and other things hopefully it won't find too many other big issues but anyways if you like this video please give a thumbs up share with a friend if you're not already subscribed to the channel please do subscribe to the channel it really does help out a lot and you get to follow along on this great thing because remember at the end of it we're going on a road trip so you get to see if this car makes it or not and uh, we'll get to meet the owner as well who is a really interesting and cool guy but if you like this video give a thumbs up and um until next time i'm adam this was a little classic i'll see you soon